Have you ever tried to travel with your 3D printer or take your 3D printer to work or school? For anyone who has tried that, you'll know that it is a massive pain to do so. Well, what if your 3D printer fits inside a filament spool box so you can easily take it anywhere you go? Introducing the Positron, an upside down, compact 3D printer capable of accelerating up to 8,000 mm squared per second while maintaining beautiful quality. The printer can be easily set up and packed up within 90 seconds, so it can be easily taken anywhere you go. It manages all the functions above while maintaining a gantry that is more rigid than most 3D printers on the market. You might be thinking, a foldable 3D printer the size of the filament box must have abysmal print volume, right? Well, the Positron actually has a massive build volume compared to its footprint. And compared to two other printers with a similar footprint, the Positron actually has 8 times the build volume of the Fulcrum Minibot and double that of the Voron V0. In fact, Positron's build volume is large enough to print almost any 3D prints I have ever designed. How is the printer able to achieve these specs? And why does it print upside down? These questions will be answered after this quick sponsor message. This video is sponsored by JLC PCB. From them, you can get 5 custom PCBs for just $2. They have also just started offering services for aluminum backed PCBs and their service is both quick and cheap. In fact, several parts on the Positron, especially the transparent build plate, uses custom PCBs from JLC PCB, and I was able to quickly iterate through the designs until it worked. Check them out at the link in the description. Now, this video is the first one in the multi-part series of which I will be going over a step-by-step -step process of making this printer. For this first video, I will be showing the capabilities of this printer, as well as showing some beautiful prints that this printer has produced. As for always, all the design files and the resources are linked down in the description. And by the way, if you like what I do, please consider subscribing to my channel and please stick around for an exciting announcement at the end of the video. So to answer the question in the title, why is this printer upside down? Well, the main reason is maximum stability at minimum weight, which is essential in a portable 3D printer. 3D printer heads are not light, and they are usually being swung around by the motor at high speeds and accelerations. As a result, this can cause the whole machine to shake, so 3D printer designers add a heavy and thick frame to make the printer more rigid. But by flipping the entire printer upside down, the heavy moving mass is not close to the ground, no matter how tall the print is. This way, the center of gravity is always near the base of the printer. Thus, only a sturdy base is needed for the gantry to be stable. In this case, a 6mm aluminum plate. Another benefit of this upside down structure is that now the X and Y axes are both on the same plane. Most foldable 3D printer designs fold down the X and Z axis, which can make the printer realignment quite tricky. However, in the case with the Positron, the X or Y axes are never folded, meaning that the gantry will always remain square and perpendicular. Speaking of the gantry, this printer uses a unique cable-driven inverted HBOT design which is inspired by the same belt-driven design by Lobo CNC. Link in the description. This particular type of gantry moves the same way that a core XY mechanism does. And because it uses the synchromesh cables, belt twisting is no longer an issue. The main reason why the 3D printer can be so compact is because of the way that the gantry is mounted on the base. If I mount the gantry lengthwise, along the square base like this. The longest the gantry can theoretically be is only 200 millimeters. However, if the gantry is mounted edge to edge, the maximum length is now increased to around 280 millimeters, 
this simple change can actually more than double the print volume. Since the Positron prints upside down, if it had an opaque build plate, it will be quite difficult to see the print. So I spent a lot of time designing a transparent build plate. And the final result is a piece of burl silicate glass covered with copper heating elements. These elements are actually quite easy to find as they are the same as a car's windshield. I believe this is the only FDM 3D printer where you can actually look through the build plate at the bottom of your first layer, which creates a quite a mesmerizing experience, as well as making the first layer adhesion issues very easy to spot. Because of all the unusual changes done to this machine, there is not enough room for a standard hot end. Instead, now the hot end takes a 90 degree turn where the filament comes in from the side and goes up to the nozzle. It took me over 6 revisions to get the hot end performing well, and because of the increased melt zone, this special hot end can push more plastic than the E3D V6, and I had no extrusion issues so far. Everything in this printer has been designed to minimize space. The extruder and the Z-axis mechanism are both driven by worm gears. The precision machined Z-axis connect block matches up with the grooves created by the linear rails on the Z-axis tower. This makes it so that every time the Z-axis will be always matched up perfectly straight and perpendicular to the printer body. In terms of features, Positron has basically all of what you expect from a premium 3D printer. The firmware uses the Clipper firmware, which means that it has unique features such as smooth pressure advance, resonance cancellation, and being able to start a print from any device near the printer. Positron also has all the other standard features, such as automatic mesh bed leveling, OLED display, dual drive on the extruder, and also filament runout sensor. And don't forget the RGB LED to go with all of it. With all of the feature explained, let's see how this printer performs. Because this printer prints upside down, one of the most obvious questions is that does the prints fall off the build plate? The answer is no. The prints actually stick very well to the sheet of glass. And upon cooling, the prints also automatically release themselves. The only time where I had prints falling off the bed was due to warping and the nozzle knocking them off. In this case, the print is still going to fail even if the printer is printing right side up. Another big question is bridging. Can this printer print long bridges? And the answer is yes, and surprisingly well actually. In fact, I think the nozzle actually pushes up against the bridge slightly during each pass. So even a 50mm bridge is no problem for this printer. When I designed this printer, I thought the supports are going to print quite horribly, since I thought they rely on gravity to work correctly. So I tried to print the most intensive support test I can think of, which is the impossible cube. But the results actually surprised me, as the printed supports are just as easy to remove compared to my Prusa i3 MK3. And the underside of the prints does look decent also. To get an apples to apples comparison, I printed two benches, one using my fully tuned Prusa i3 MK3 and the other one using the Positron. And they actually turned out nearly identical. This means that printing upside down has practically no difference compared to printing right side up. To test the retraction and the mechanical accuracy, I printed this small piece of chainmail which worked without any problems. And also this iris by Lobo CNC, which also worked beautifully without any problems. I used Kira to slice all my parts. However, the Clipper firmware supports G-code from almost all standard slicers. The standard print speed is 100 millimeters per second. This speed is enough to print a Benchy in less than 30 minutes. Overall, this printer took me over 6 months to design and build, and I learned a lot of things along the way. I will share all of them with you in the upcoming build series. 
I will also continue to improve this printer. And if there are enough demand, I will start to plan for a commercial version of this printer. I am going to post the entire build series on this printer very soon. And all the design files and the BOM will be free and relevant links are in the description. Finally, before I leave you with a montage of the printer, I have an exciting announcement to make. Sorry for the long wait, but now my power bank project is finally on Indiegogo. And the reason why it took so long, certain issues came up that required the system to be redesigned for functionality improvement and safety. The power bank is also a open source modular power bank with a beautiful design and a plethora of functions and features. And if you like to support my channel, please check out the campaign. The link is in the description. I thank all of you for your support that enabled me to do all these amazing projects. And if you have any questions regarding the printer or the campaign, please post them in the comments below. And now for the montage.